Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Suzerania. So last time, we passed the Constitutional Amendment. We now just need to get it through the Supreme Court, which is definitely going to be a, um, a little bit more difficult. Losing Peter and I convened on a massive balcony of the palace. It was nice to catch a breeze with the increasing summer heat. Both had grins on our faces, but Peter got larger as he kept congratulating me on our success in the assembly. Fellas, the first obstacle has been cleared. Congratulations to all of us. Great job, gentlemen. Peter leaned on the, on the balcony railing. What about Tarkin's soul? Did you see him again? As far as I know, he's still staying in Hostlord, but hasn't cared to pay his respects to the president yet. What the hell are they all about anyways? Him appearing out of nowhere? What do you think his real intention was? He wished to intimidate the assembly into rejecting a proposal, sir. That uh, seems to have failed, but we can't be sure. He might uh, be here to work with the court. As long as he's around, he'll always have influence over the republic he built. We should have seen this coming. But he has no authority anymore. Well, the laws protect him from almost anything. I allow him to be a member of the assembly. We can still propose bills and vote for them. Oh, he can still propose bills and vote for them. I call it property authority, if you ask me. When you are a founder of the system, you don't need to be sitting in the president's office to have power. Lucian's right. He's already showcased his power at the vote. We must be careful. We must be careful indeed. With him around, we have to be extra careful. We cannot let this party slip away from our hands. Exactly. We must plan our next steps. Of course, sir. Yeah, we have our first obstacle cleared out, but next we have a council of grumpy old men in our way. I have to say that it's a nice description of, uh, for, for the court, but unfortunately for us, they are more than that. They are biggest trouble yet. Also, uh, you are forgetting about the grumpy Miss Edmonds. They're not all grumpy old men. Uh, I mean, like, let me just look at the, the court. Because right now, we have 6 out of 11 seats. I mean, the centrists have 3, right? And my, my, my thing about that, like, I feel like if I was a, like, if I was a centrist in the Supreme Court, and the National Assembly passed something like 90 to 10, I would be inclined to vote for it, because otherwise, like, it's, it's really... I mean, Miss Morgana, she's technically member too. Wait, did you just call Nia a grumpy old woman? She, he laughed. Lucy looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Anyways, he clears his throat about the court. Miss Morgan has been helping out with the lobbying of the court. She's been speaking to Miss Edmonds, and we believe she's our key inside. Our lobbying efforts are continuing positively, but without concrete results yet. It'll ultimately be up to Miss Morgana and you to persuade the justices, sir. And we've already had Nia inside the court. That's already one vote out of eleven. Which leaves us five more. Well, Nia has the ears of both Justice Dalton and Merton, so we could assume we have their support as well. So, it gives us three votes to start with. Not trying to be pessimistic, but Miss Morgana cannot do this alone. Let's not forget about Orso and his loyalists. We still need to reach out to the old guards and the moderates in order to receive six votes. Do you think we can do it? We've come this far. Anything is possible. We may also need to reach out to the old guard at some point as well. We cannot get Miss... If we cannot get Miss Edmund centrist, there is no other way. I mean, the assembly votes... Uh, I'm sure the assembly votes changed our mind. I mean, the proposal passed but by 90%, for, for God's sake. They want Jared to reject such a popular proposal. It was indeed a historic vote. Mr. President has done something even Tarkin Soul had trouble with. But this may also make the court see it as the ultimate threat. It wouldn't be so relaxed. Don't worry. If we, fa if we fail at the court at this stage, I'm sure the people see them as they really are. I wouldn't be so sure. They control them more than just the court, as you know. The average citizen has no interest in such things. It wouldn't be too helpful. In any case, we should start with our best bet. We already have asked Nia to arrange a meeting with Edmonds. She's willing to speak with you. I'm, it's, a, it's a good start. She's willing to talk. She's willing to cooperate. I'm sure you'll convince her. Lisa and Sully turned around and pointed at the side towards the balcony. Look who's coming. It was Franz Richter. Slowly walked uh, up to us with a smile on his face. Good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you doing today? Afternoon, Mr. Richter. We're doing good, friends. Enjoying a victory of the assembly. Oh, yes. I should congratulate you again for passing the proposal. You deserved it. We should also thank you for your efforts. It was a big help. Franz bowed his head slightly in response. I'm looking forward to having many more cooperation between us and victories. I wish you good luck with the Supreme Court. I have conversed with Ms. Morgana and Justice Isaac. Uh, we have at least three votes supporting the proposal of the court. We must be united if we want to break them. 
We must also be seen as united more than ever. Therefore, I'd like to propose a proper alliance for the next election, and more in-depth collaboration until the next turn. Uh, I love to accept such a proposal, Mr. Victor. It's great to hear. Since a grand coalition has never happened in Sorlin before, we should uh, show people that our parties can work together and that change is possible. It would surely be a great symbolic meeting, especially if we can change the constitution. I'll reach out to you as soon as possible. We must start organizing and announcing it as soon as possible. Franz reached out to down to his pocket, followed with a napkin, and wiped the sweat off his forehead. Anyway, I'll leave you 3B. We'll catch up soon. I'd rather be back inside now. The sun is getting intense. He walked back to the door and left the balcony. Well, that was interesting. All right, so are we seriously joining forces with the PFJP, huh? I'm not sure how deep we'll dive in, but for now, we'll cooperate. The coalition government of the PFJP can mean a lot of things, but one thing for sure, Mr. Richter is not a man to leave things up to us if he comes into the government. We should be careful, sir. Lucien looked at his watch. I think it's time to conclude our little meeting, sir. There's a tap on my shoulder. Livia Suna had joined me on the balcony. Pardon for the interruption, gentlemen. Uh, David Whiskey is calling uh, about the upcoming foreign me policy meeting. Perfect timing. Tell him we'll be right there. I will, sir. She turned to leave the balcony, then back to us. Congratulations on the victory, Mr. Rain. Peter. She looked Peter in the eye when she said this and ignored Lucien altogether. <laughs> Got him. Peter's eyes followed her as he walked out. Getting pretty hot out here. Okay, let's call it finished. You can both go. All right, gentlemen. See you later. They both left. Invitation to a movie premiere. Anything else happening? Runeberg whistleblower arrives. High old agent has escaped from Runeberg and sees refuge in Sorland. A whistleblower from Murgrid Security Bureau has escaped the Sorland through the uh, crossing in Estord. Agent Chesson Housestone has promised to reveal extremely sensitive information about the development of the program. We can't give him refuge in risk and take him rubric or send him back. You know, we'll grant him asylum. Okay, we've accepted the whistleblower. If the only thing we can do is the, the movie premiere, I feel like we might have more important things to do. I've been invited to an exclusive premiere of Alfred Kru Alfred Krubrick's new film, The Morning Shall Come. Although I wasn't much of a movie-going mood, it would have been unpresidential not to attend. It was, with its massive budget and Krubrick's directional uh, katiche, this drama was set in a milestone for Solon's burgeoning film scene. Personally, though, I was just looking forward to spending more time with my family. It was very hot in the sunny days of Sergei. Uh, it was a very hot and sunny day. Sergei drove us to the old capital. The film was screened in the historic cinema... Angel del Elroy, the very first cinema of Sorland. I gazed at the vast plains between Hostel and Elroy as we drove on the H1. Sergey and Max had the air conditioning to keep the Kaledi comfortable. Frank fidgeted in his tie as he uh, stared out the window. Are you worried about university exam, son? Since when do you care about what's happening in my life? What do you mean? Do you not remember like five episodes ago we, we drank beer and ate barbecue? I've been busy lately, but I'll have time for you. What an honor, your highness. Frank, don't talk to your father that way. You've been working so hard for this country. I ignored him and turned to Dina. Are you excited for the movie, sweetie? Dina nodded happily. What about you, Papa? You want something, right? You should smile. You keep doing your best, even if you lose. That's my girl. Thanks a lot. You've been awfully quiet, Monica. I just want to focus on having a nice time in the movies. Monica folded her arms. We drove in silence. Sergey rolled down the sa uh, soundproof glass between us. Sir, we're about to enter uh, uh, Elroy. We'll be at the cinema in a few minutes. Thank you, Sergey. I took a brief look outside as Sergey rolled the soundproof, uh, soundproof glass up again. I could see many uh, towers in Elroy rising over what was left of the old city walls. Wasn't your vineyard around here? Monica pointed at the hills at the outskirts of the city. It's not mine, it's ours. She smiled. Sergei knocked on the glass and gestured forward. We are at the main square of Elderoy. The historic cinema of uh, Angeli. The cinema of Angels was right in front of us. Is this the place? Yeah. It was an old uh, brick style corner building with walls that looked like marble from a distance. There were exquisite ornaments on each side of every window. Sergei pulled the car to the entrance of the building, which was lit by vivid neon stripes in many colors. On the wall of the entrance, there was a painted word, Stop the Oppression of the Bloods. Come on now, let's get out. 
So we opened the doors and we exited on the red carpet. We were just about to enter the building when a jurors managed to block my path. Mr. President, Mr. President, your constituent of four made it through the assembly. How do you feel about your chance in Supreme Court? I trust the just justices to make the right decision. Thank you, Mr. President. And are you aware that Clark and Soul would be pre present at the proceedings? I refuse to discuss Colonel Soul at this time. Before she could ask anything else, the guards ushered us inside the theater. In contrast to Sydney's Bores Asala theater, the inside was modern and sleek, with bare walls painted in black, red, and white. The film's cast and crew were already on the foyer, and glasses of champagne in their hands. We approached the crowd and were welcomed by the producers and the event organizers. A man walked up to us with a quick step. Uh, Madame, Mr. President, it's good to see you here. Uh, he gently bow uh, bowed at Monica and shook her hands. It's an honor to meet you. I'm Alfred Krubrick. The honor is mine, Mr. Krubrick. I'm a big fan of your work. Frank snorted. I glanced at him and he innocently took a sip from his cola. It's very humbling to know that you've been watching and enjoying my movies. If you don't mind me asking, which one was your favorite? This one might be slightly different from my previous works. I love the man who saved the world. He stared at me for a while as if he was trying to understand if I was joking or not. That's why Markel Vargas, Mr. President. Be my film, The Sword of Dream, for the top prize at the Benfi Film Festival last year. Frank looked me in the eye and struggled not to laugh. Why don't we take our seats? Ugh. Ugh. It's just your collar there. We entered the screening room, the lights diminished, and the film began. It was a period of drama set in the 1870s about a sword, a sword of soldier who pursued a doomed romance with the widow bullish farmer during the conquest of Bergia. I wondered briefly whether Krupik was commenting on my own treatment of British people, but then he had finished filming long before I became president. As the credits rolled, I became... I made an early exit to use the men's room. I was washing my hands when I heard an unmistakable voice behind me. So, what do you think? Tarek and Sol leaned on his cane. He had the same frail appearance I had noticed in the assembly meeting. Yet up close, you could still sense the raw magnetism that cast him in power for 20 years. I found the plot questionable, but it certainly looks spectacular. What about yourself? Sentimental plabium for the enjoyment of housewives only. And for a period piece, the script contained far too many an anachronisms. Indubitably. I'm surprised to see you're, you're still around, sir. What are you doing at the assembly? My country is about to make a rash decision. I couldn't simply sit by. I still have immense respect for you, Colonel. I wish it was reciprocated. It will be when you prove yourself worthy of it. Why do you want to reform block so badly? I will not let you and this bleeding heart idiot Richter tarnish my precious constitution. I'm doing this for the good of the country. Ha! Some of this spittle land on my cheek. You'll find out soon enough how your country pays you for goodness. He, sl he slipped past me and out the door. Soul security staff and mine were now clustered outside the washroom, forming a buffer against the large crowd that had gathered. That's Targo Soul! I heard someone scream, his guards closed around him and mine around me. By the time the chaos subsided, I was back in the car with my family and Soul was long gone. So we got six newspapers, Ray and Soul meet at Kubrick screening. New law and the source language, new language bill and milestone for integration. One film, two special guests. Washroom Summit. Who are Rain? What are- I'm not hiding shit! Come on now. So you're Ceremony Day, and you over here are... God, there's so many meetings. Like, it's, it's meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting. But I think we deserve a nice dinner with the family. I rise home from work, hung my jacket up, and put my briefcase in the hall. I paused, waiting my usual greeting for my wife and daughter. Drina was out at uh, one of another uh, art school classes. I remember, but where was Monica? In the room room, I heard a muffled sob. I entered to find Monica sitting on the sofa, a letter in her hands that looked despair on her face. I sit down next to, on the couch next to Monica. Monica briefly rested her hand on my shoulder, her head on my shoulder, then handed me the letter. It's from the Department of Education. Frank's University exam results are in. He failed, didn't he? Just read the letter. I looked at the page. Fo uh, fellow below Frank's name and address, his score was written. 435 points out of a total of 1,000. At the bottom of the letter, the words failed were stamped in red. All those years of effort, all those private lessons, all drowned the drain. You know what this means? He's going to have to join the military. He could die, Anton! Does he know the results yet? No. But he should be back from school soon. 
I just don't understand. Frank's a smart boy. Why would he sabotage himself like this? I heard a key turning in the front door. Frank stopped, stomped in and was about to go straight upstairs when he noticed us both in the living room. Mom, Dad, what's going on? Have a seat, Frank. He took a seat across from us, and I handed him the letter. He started reading it. Oh, shit. Frank! Son, we're not angry at you. I, I need a moment. He went to his kitchen sink and washed his face, and when later he came back. I never thought this would happen. I'm so sorry. It's not the end of the world. Pretty close, though, isn't it? Frank looked, uh, looked close to tears. Monica put her hand on his shoulders. It's going to be okay. But you really should have studied harder, Frank. I know. I guess it's the only for me, then. Is that it? It's, it's either... You, I guess, you know, I guess we have mandatory conscription. I guess maybe if I didn't continue conscription, this wouldn't be the problem. So it seems. Anton, is there anything you can do? If Alvaro could get his dimwit son at the Kingsville University, I'm sure Hogslord State could have room for the bright little boy like, uh, Frank. I do have connections with the board. Hogsler State University would be amazing. A bunch of my friends are going there. I can still come home to do my laundry. I mean, we'll try. Thanks so much, Dan. I said I won't let you down this time. Monica let a long exhale. What a day. Who's hungry for dinner? Monica disappeared to the kitchen. Frank to his room. I went to my office and began making some phone calls. Look, it's already in the news already. Justice failed once again. Anniversary. Enough with the British protest. Um, Land Rack case with political charge in support of the WBP. And even the PFJP establishment caused this disagreement between the Ministry of Justice and Supreme Court. And you are for a diplomatic meeting. You are for the day of decision. A morning haze surrounded the city of Deir as the sun dawned on the day of decision. The holiest day of the nerdy religion. It celebrated the first message received by God by St. Das and his 30 disciples. As per tradition, the celebration was held inside the uh, Ark Sanctuary of Disturi, close to the public eye. This year, however, have this year, however, for the first time ever, it was going to be televised. Also, construction. Hey, we got some more construction here done. Let's go. Um, it was Lucy's idea, as you saw it. Uh, Grant the people a rare glimpse of this grand ceremony and showing them how seriously the president took this holy event would ease any tension that lingered in the region. And so we arrived at the largest cathedral in Sorland. A huge crowd gathered around the convoy as the car pulled up to the entrance. This will work out well, trust me, sir. Of course, that's only the prayer is done completely correct. Please don't forget the order. First, you need to grasp the holy scepter with your left hand. Then touch the altar with your right. Kneel before the archpriest and wait for him to put the sword on your shoulder. Then, touch the sword with the hand you touch the altar with. Hand the scepter over to the archpriest and receive the sword with, with, uh, before passing it on to the disciple. You know what? This will be the first time I've ever used a note feature. So, scepter, left hand, um, altar right, kneel, sword, sword with right hand, hand, uh, scepter to priest. And th look, the, the word is not going to be spelling. It's going to be an issue, but don't worry about that. Receive the sword. Pass to disciple. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah, sure. Very good. Why are why is every single option here like very like passive aggressive? You have to go first. I will come inside later, and we will meet up at the part. Was done. Exit the car. I exited the car and I was uh, greeted by a chorus of cheers and camera flashes. I waved the people as I made my way to the Grand Gates. The Art Sanctuary was a sight to see. With its towering visage, I cast a shadow over a large portion of the city. I had, a crane, um, I had to crane my neck to see the narrow spines at the top. Just as standing just standing next to it made me feel in awe and dread in equal measure. As I reached the gate, I, sp I spotted my welcome committee. The Archpriest and his disciples were waiting for my arrival. At my approach, they all bowed their head in respect. The Archpriest gave me... An infectious smile as he straight forward as he straightened his back up, tall and handsome in his mid fifties. He was one of the youngest and most popular archpriests in history. Some of his more avid followers even likened him to Saint Dost. Mr. President, uh, praise God. Really, we have, we have no codex for like the Pope. 
It's a pleasure to see you on a most holy day. Welcome, welcome. Bow your heads. Bow my head before the art priest triggered a few murmurs of approval from the crowd. The crowd was still cheering loudly. The arch priest turned and raised both his hands and everyone immediately fell silent. Oh, great people of Sorlin, once again we are gathered here to honor the day of decision. I am in, um, instantly happy to be sharing this moment with you as well as every blood and sword, old and young, tuning in to their televisions to watch this holy uh, commemoration. Along with the leader of our great nation, I say, let the holy day begin. Stay far from evil, O sons and daughters. For evil hides itself in many disguises. Disguises just blasphemy, possibly even alcohol. Be good, my child. Praise God. Praise Sorland. He smiled uh, benefitly as the crowd burst into rapture applause. After his sight, he turned to me. Shall we move inside for your confession? My confession? Yes, just like last year, every man must confess before the holy ceremony starts. He led me through the main hall, which was uh, set up to the ceiling, and nervous icons lining the walls. He, we walked up to ceremony, uh, up to creaking sparrow side crest to the top floor, and finally arrived in front of the confession chamber. Right this way. He gestured towards a chair in the dark room. The room smelled of old mahogany and scented ca candles. The archpriest proceeded to light each and every one of the candles, each one for each virtue and vice. I'll be right with you. He left the room. A minute later, I heard a sound of sliding window right next to me. He spoke with a very soft voice. Anton Rain, speak. Speak and confess now before the one God, and may he repent your sins in the most holy day of decision. I have not been a bad I don't think I've done anything to be a bad husband. I confess that I'm not sure I'm doing what uh what I'm doing for Solon is enough. Do you carry a heavy burden on her shoulders? What you uh, what you have confessed is not a sin, but you may share your burden with me if you like. I'm trying to reform the country, but I don't know if the country is ready for that yet. Reformation is one of the tenets of nerdy, yet it must come slowly but surely. Anything else you like to confess? I confess that I've been a bad husband. Family is the cornerstone of society. Under the watchful eye of God, men are required to protect their wives and family. But God has created us as complex creatures. At times, conflicts rise among us. Tell us, what was your sin? I've been neglecting my family due to the stress of my position. Tragedy of, of neglect happens to all working men that feeds his family. Rejoice. God is kind in matters of family. That is all I like to confess, because I haven't really done anything sinful. You are now forgiven for God, Anton Rain. May you never sin again. Well, well, we'll, we'll see how that goes. For the confession to end, we must extinguish the candles representing each of your, uh, each one of your virtues and vices. With this, the once burning sins connected to you are now smoke and then nothing. One by one, I extinguish the candles. Well done, Mr. President. Let's move on to my quarter before the ceremony. He led me through the thousand-year-old corridors of his office. The smell of dust and old tombs was in the air, along with the scent of burning incense being prepared for the ceremony. Well then, have a seat. The wooden chair next to him looked like it might turn to dust at a single touch. I sat down uh, gingerly. It was surprisingly sturdy. Are you ready for the ceremony? Absolutely. Very good to hear. He leaned back and shared comfortably. I want to talk to you about something. I realize it's been months since the Benfi Festival, but this is the first chance to bring it up with you, and about your actions, the First Lady. As you know, the, the festival is a holy event. Letting women make the opening speeches did not sit well with us. We share the same uh, concerns as Mr. Lest. I once placed him beside our family, not giving public speeches and revealing dresses, certainly not insulting the important traditions such as behind such an event. Disgust was apparent on his face. Of course, we cannot ask you to do anything about it. She is your wife. But I just wanted to voice her disapproval of the situation. A woman presiding over such important religious events, what have we become? I let her do it, her speech, because people like you still exist. His face soured and did not reply. He looked me up and down for a moment. I also heard you decide on a new curriculum. And decide that creationism shall no longer be taught in Sorlin schools. Needless to say, I and the rest of the church are outraged. The possibility that an entire generation of school children will have their mind filled with nonsense about evolution. While well, failing to learn one of the main tenets of nerdy will hurt us for years to come. Religion does not belong in schools, just like it does not belong in my government's policies. Well, I was just, uh, a couple of knocks were heard at the door and a young boy came in. He bowed before the archpriest, before then me, for letting us know the ceremony was about to begin. We made our way downstairs where the ceremony was already in proce uh, progress. The choir sang angelically as the archpriest took a position before the altar. When he finished the hymn, an expected silence fell over the room. It was time to start my part. I started my walk, bowed, and approached the altar. 
Scepter, left hand. I grab the scepter with my left hand and touch the altar with my right. Then I kneel before the archpriest. The archpriest laid a sword on my shoulder. Then shoulder sword with right hand, which is the sword we touch with the altar. I touch the sword with the hand that touched the altar. Hand the scepter to the high to the archpriest. And wait for him to give me the sword. The archpriest handed me the sword. Pass the sword to a disciple. I got up and proceeded to my designated spot next to Lucy, and he leaned over and whispered my ear. Compared to last year, that went surprisingly well, sir. My eyes met the archpriest, and he very slightly nodded. The ceremony went on for another hour and a half. Finally, the noon bells chimed, marking the end of the cathedral services. We left the cathedral to greet the wailing crowd. As I sat outside, I heard everyone cheering and chanting my name. Lucian's gambit seemed to have been a success. We were proudly for a minute or two. See, sir, I told you it would work out. We entered our cars and drove back to our suites in Deer. And I think with that done... This is going to be a good time for us to end this episode. So thank you so much for watching. My name is Anthony If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Now, do I close them down? If you want to see more, subscribe and goodbye.